Hey guys, what is up? Steven here doing a, another quick video uh, following up on our composite free agency rankings. Uh, this is something that Tyler and I have been really doing the last few weeks. So if you missed uh, my video on offensive linemen and interior defensive linemen, please go check that out. Tyler has one up from a few weeks ago as well on running backs, receivers, and tight ends. So uh, today, wanted to jump in and talk about the edge rushers as well as the linebackers. This is obviously a group that the Chargers have a couple of players in, of course, Uchenna Unwosu and Kaiser White. So uh, two very important players to this past season, two very young players, players that are homegrown talents, uh, and I think played their best ball of the season this year. So it was really interesting to see how they stacked up in terms of comparing them to other free agents and, and kind of looking at potential contracts and things like that. So uh, that being said, i uh, going to jump into this, excuse me, while my, my dog's moving around in here, but um, let's dive in. I'm going to share my screen here and kind of show you guys our uh, spreadsheet for a second here. Get this up and working. Um, so that being said, I'm going to do edge rushers first. And so this is a really interesting group because I think you have a lot of different uh, flavors, if you will, at the top, specifically in the top 15, right? You've got, you know, Vaughn Miller, Melvin Ingram, Justin Houston, Chandler Jones, still alive and kicking. Uh, and then you have some young guns, Charles Harris, Harold Landry, Nwosu, and Derek Barnett, just to name a few. So um, as always, I put a snap filter on here. I did get to 30 edge rushers. There's quite a bit. Um, so I had to bump this snap minimum up to 25%. Otherwise, <laughs> this list would be crazy long um, with a ton of names on it. So uh, like last time, I have snap percentage, total pressures, pass rush win rate, run stops, run stop win rate, and then, of course, their composite score. Uh, and then next to a few of them, I have some potential uh, contracts projections from Pro Football Focus. Um, so just a, a couple things to jump into. And again, uh, this is according to where they rank among free agents. This is not uh, among all edge rushers. This is just uh, how these players stack up among these th group of 30 players. So uh, Charles Harris, very interesting name up at the top, a uh, former first round pick who kind of busted, if you will, and then kind of signed a mid-level contract with the Detroit Lions and really kind of it is stride. They, of course, did the same thing with uh, Romeo Okwara, I think is his name, not Julian, because I know there's two up there. <laughs> but Charles Harris, former Detroit Lion, uh, is a free agent. And that's an interesting one to keep an eye on because uh, it seems like most people kind of expect them to uh, take an uh, edge rusher early, uh, specifically, you know, at the number two pick with uh, Aiden Hutchinson. So uh, definitely something to keep an eye on. PFF does not have a potential contract up there for him, um, but certainly could be an interesting target there. Unwosu does come in at 10th, um, where I think you kind of see him at is is certainly around a mid-level edge rusher, and I think this kind of shows that very similar numbers, as you can see, to, to Derek Barnett, Chandler Jones, who I know a lot of people uh, want the Chargers to go out and sign, kind of depending on the contract there. Um, and he's just a, a little bit of a tier below, you know, a hair Landry or a Jadavian Clowney. And I think that's about fair for Unwosu. But I think if this, if I had done this only for like the back half of the season, I think Unwosu would be a few spots higher because that's really where he was able to play his best ball. So, uh, PFF does not have a contract projection for him up. I've said around 12 million is, is per is probably what we are. Looking at for Uchenna and Wosu, um, Derek Barnett, of course, has a 3.3 times 12.5. Randy Gregory, a 2 times 2, 12.5. Excuse me, can't really talk right now. <laughs> um, messing up all over the place. But those are those are similar kind of players, I think. Randy Gregory really is this low because he was 27th in snap percentage. Um, there was an injury, a suspension, all that stuff. But in terms of pure pass rusher, he was sixth in total pressures and fifth in pass rush win rate. So uh, just kind of looking at how things kind of vary from these defensive linemen. So outside of Unwosu, I think is a, a must resign. I think he, like I said, I feel like he played his best ball this season. This was his first year as a starter, um, new scheme, new everything else. And I think he really showed off a, a high level playmaking ability down the stretch. Um, I definitely think that 
if you bring him back, you do need a legitimate compliment behind him. I think Kyler Fackrell uh, was just not that kind of player for the Chargers. Uh, I think he's an okay fourth rush, fourth edge rusher, depth piece. Um, so kind of that, that's kind of going to depend on roster construction too. If they want to bring him back, I don't know if they're going to want to carry five edge rushers next year um, because you, of course you have Chris Rumpf too. I, I think he ideally is still that fourth edge rusher. So I'm looking for a way to upgrade that third spot behind Inwosu and maybe give someone, get someone, excuse me, in that same kind of tier. That way you have two really solid edge rushers opposite of Joey Bosa. And so it's interesting, right? Like everybody has mentioned Hassan Reddick. We've mentioned Hassan Reddick on this show quite a bit. Uh, and he's fifth on this list. Very similar contract projection, three times 11.67 uh as what i'm expecting for Nwosu. reddick of course is a little on the lighter side um, which i think is, is kind of been people's biggest concern with him uh in terms of play strength but the numbers are fantastic eighth in total pressures second in run stops 11th in run stop percentage 16th in pass rush win rate uh, espn pass rush win rate has him much higher uh, same with Nwosu, actually. Nwosu being at 17th was a little surprising to me because uh, ESPN has him, I think, around 8 or 9, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, someone feel free to correct me if I'm wrong in the comments there. But, um, again, this is all from PFF's numbers, um, not from ESPN. I just wanted a consistent source. So um, so that's an interesting option, of course. I, Jadavion Clowney is, is somebody that I think a lot of people, there's a lot of – varying opinions on him but he had a fantastic season for the cleveland browns he's he's got experience in the three four as an outside linebacker and and you know the knock on him has kind of been his ability as a pass rusher but he was fourth on this list in terms of total pressures seventh in pass rush room rate fifth in run stops tenth in run stop percentage and you know he's kind of in that stage of his career where he's doing the one-year contract thing i think that makes a lot of sense 15 million probably a little bit too high but if they can get a Jadavian Clowney type of pass rusher for a one-year $10 million deal, then I think that's something that this team should absolutely consider. You know, um, that gives them time to, you know, figure out if Unosu really is that kind of player, allows them to develop Chris Rum for another year, kind of give him a second redshirt season, if you will, which kind of sucks, but that's where he's at in his development. So I, I think someone signing someone like a Jadavian Clowney makes a lot of sense. Justin Houston as well. He doesn't really strike me as like a three, four outside linebacker type. Um, but if they're able to get him, you know, on a one-year deal, I would not be opposed. Very disruptive. As you can see here, 10th um, in total pressures, 10th in pass rush roommate, six in run stops and first in run stop percentage. So uh, that's something that I think is kind of underrated in terms of the Chargers run defenses. They really need some more playmaking uh, on the edge as, as it pertains to edge rushers. So that's kind of where, Kyler Fackrell struggled this season. Um, but yeah, Justin Houston makes a lot of sense. If they can get Chandler and Jones, like great. Um, but I'm not paying $16.75 million for Chandler and Jones at this stage in his career. Um, if they can get him for 12, 13, like I think that again, that's something to consider. Um, an interesting name down here at the bottom is Dante Fowler. Um, he's kind of been like a draft disappointment. I mean, he signed with the Atlanta Falcons to be their best pass rusher. And as you can see, uh, pretty similar numbers to Unwosu, right? 17th in total pressures, 18 and 18th in pass rush win rate. But again, disruptive against the run. So he's got familiarity playing in 3-4 as an outside linebacker. I think that could be an interesting contract target because like I said, I don't think he would be all that expensive. There's not a ton of value there. He's considered like a draft bust kind of player. So um Maybe get him for a year. Arden Key is another one. He's kind of like that inside outside rusher. Um, outside of that, you know, Lorenzo Carter, I put him in here specifically. Uh, I mean, he he did meet the snap count threshold, but uh, Brandon Staley specifically mentioned him by name in one of his press conferences, former Georgia outside linebacker and played for the Giants. Um, his numbers are okay. They're not great, but, you know, he checks in at 25th here. Takaris McKinley, another one that's kind of considered, you know, a bust, but he does have a really good win rate on PFF and ESPN. So maybe there's something there still. Uh, then we get <laughs> down in this kind of range with Alex Okafor, 
Jason Pierre Paul and Ryan Kerrigan, where I'm just like a uh, hard pass there. So uh, we'll see. Like I said, I, I think, you know, all options are on the table for upgrading that third spot. I certainly would not be opposed to drafting one in the first, second or third round. That's kind of where you're going to get your best value, especially long term. But I think they need a guy now to come in and make an impact. So for me, um, I forgot to mention Everson Griffin, but uh, he productive player kind of seems like he's trending towards retirement at this point, um, according to some Minnesota people. But uh, we'll see there. So I think for me, I'm looking at obviously re-signing Uchenna and Wosu, and then maybe going out and getting a one-year deal for a guy like Jadavian Clowney, Justin Houston, possibly Chandler Jones, if he's willing to settle for that. And then Dante Fowler, of course, if Vaughn Miller wants to come over, <laughs> then of course, sign me up. I mean, he's dominating the playoffs right now. Um, apparently there is some legitimate buzz that he'd be interested in going back to Denver after potentially uh, winning a ring with the Rams. I think it's, I think his son and his baby mama live in Denver, if I'm not mistaken. Um, of course, if the Chargers could get him on a, on a similar kind of deal, one year's or one year's, hello, grammar, uh, one year kind of $15 million would be about the tops that I would pay him. He's projected right now from PFF at two times 17. Uh, that's a little much for me. And then uh, I apologize, like seeing Melvin Ingram that high probably is, is not great, uh, but he's been fantastic for the Chiefs, which obviously sucks. All right, let's get to uh, linebackers now. This, of course, is uh, Kaiser White range, and uh, he came out fantastic in this list. Third and snap, second. Oh, and I should say before I start this, of course, the categories here for linebacker are much more extensive, of course, because you have to play the run. We have to play the pass. So I have 10 categories here. Uh, snap percentage, excuse me, snap percentage, solo tackles against the run, stop percentage against the run. That's what ATR is. Uh, average depth of tackle against the run, force fumbles, and then reception percentage, yards per reception, pass breakups, interceptions, uh, snaps per reception allowed, and then, of course, composite ranking and contract value. So uh, this is much more extensive. You know, the, the turnovers are different because you know like the people who are number three on, on in this ranking like all these players that just means that they were like last <laughs> you know they didn't have any turnovers for example um and then same kind of thing with the interceptions so somebody who finished first obviously had the most i think the most was four um and then somebody who's fourth didn't have any <laughs> so the interceptions and fumbles, I, you know, obviously felt like I had to put them in there, uh, but it does kind of skew things a little bit in terms of players average ranking. But, um, you know, that's why you see all these clusters right here on the right hand side of the screen. You have all these players with 10.1, 10.2, you know, all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, so Kaiser White comes in at third, uh, third in snap percentage, second in total in solo tackles. 14th in uh, tackle percentage, 12th in average depth of tackle, really where he shined, of course, turnovers where he had uh, the two force fumbles, he had the three interceptions, um, but he also had really good numbers in coverage, right? So I'm looking at pass breakups, reception percentage, yards per reception, where Kaiser White was third in uh, yards per reception allowed. So really fantastic numbers in uh in coverage against the run and everything like that i think kaiser white is a true number one linebacker i think he needs a second linebacker and that's kind of the issue with the chargers right now because drew tranquil i think is pretty clearly a three and kenneth murray who the hell knows man like uh, that's such a struggle for me to figure out what to expect from kenneth murray but um Pro Football Focus has Kaiser White only at 4.75 annual yearly salary, which I think is kind of ridiculous, especially looking at the numbers in, you know, a similar area, similar tier. I mean, Alexander Johnson down here, uh, former Bronco, of course, connected to Brandon Staley uh, at two times 6.5. Like him being ahead of Kaiser White doesn't make any sense to me. Alexander Johnson, pretty productive but injured. He was injured last year, injured this year. So Kaiser White doesn't have those same kind of injury concerns. And he had a better season, of course, through the numbers. So 
I think Kaiser Wright probably checks in around seven, eight million dollars annual yearly value. So um, that's just kind of where I'm thinking. Um, we've unfortunately heard from a, a couple people that we that think that Kaiser is probably uh, not back next year because they're going to be focusing in on the defensive line. But uh, we'll see, man. I, I really hope that uh, the Chargers don't <laughs> let the best linebacker season they've had since Donnie Edwards walk, that'd be really bad. But I just get major Adrian Phillips vibes here. You know, he wasn't an early round draft pick. He, he is a free agent. You have younger players on the roster who are cheaper. They were drafted recently. It just, to me, feels like he's not going to be on this team next year. As much as I hate it as somebody who championed for him to get a Pro Bowl nomination, I just... I think the math doesn't work out when you're trying to pay him and fix the defensive line and fix the pass rush and fix the secondary. So I think we might have to be looking at a Kenneth Murray, Drew Tranquil pairing next year, uh, along with Nick Neiman, Amy, and Ogbong Lamiga. So that, I think that's where we're at. Again, that's just me. A lot of speculation, of course, here in January. In terms of potentially replacing him, Alex Anzalone here is really interesting. He's not great against the run, 11th in run in solo tackles, 21st in run stops, but he's fantastic in all of the coverage number in all of the coverage metrics. Third in let me make sure I have this right. Third in reception percentage. Oops. It's hard with all the list with the list down there. Um, eighth in yards per reception or yards per snap allowed. Like his coverage numbers are fantastic. And he there is a coaching connection there. He played with the Saints, played under Michael Will Hoyt for a few years, um, and I think this makes a lot of sense. He's kind of that cheap veteran presence, similar to a Nick Vigil, Kyler Fackrell. And again, you're potentially losing on Kaiser White because you think he has too much contract value. Replace him with somebody who has a perhaps similar ability against the pass and not necessarily a starter. You know, we'll see there. PFF doesn't even have a, a contract value on him. I can't imagine that he would be uh, all that cheap. So this is interesting, too. Of course, Alec Ogletree signed basically like in training camp, I think, by the Bears as insurance and, and like super cheap contract. <laughs> he ended up being number one on here. Uh, fantastic season from Ogletree, which is just kind of crazy. Perhaps there, there are a lot of people on Twitter who think that linebacker is essentially the running back position of the defense where you can get cheap production, of course, no better example than Devondre Campbell, who finished fourth in this uh, and the Packers signed for super cheap and had a Pro Bowl season, all pro season. So um, we'll see if they do end up losing out on Kaiser White. There are, of course, a couple other options here. Alec Anzalone is interesting. Quan Alexander, another one that um, really outside of being injured and having a low snap percentage would probably – be in a similar range as like a Christian Kirksey or uh, Oluk, Oluk one. I'm Damien Wilson. <laughs> I'm not even going to try and say that guy's first name. Um, but Quan Alexander, of course, has the coaching connection, played for the Saints last year, also played for the Niners where Michael Wilhoit has played. He's played a lot in that same kind of scheme. So that's an interesting one. Um, I mentioned Alexander Johnson, former Bear or former Bronco. So you never know there with former Broncos and uh, Coach Staley. So um, the other options there, Kenny Young, former Ram. Um, I think Troy Reader is a former Ram as well. Not great options, but they will be very cheap, and there is scheme familiarity there. I think you can also put Micah Kaiser in there, somebody who did not hit the snap percentage threshold, um, but there, I think he had a much better 2020 than any of the other former Rams or former Bronco linebackers on here. Um, but I think at this point, Quan Alexander would be kind of my choice or Anzalone. Um, I think they have that kind of athleticism that the Chargers are looking for in that position. And again, they'll probably be pretty cheap. Anzalone being this high, again, really just speaks to his uh, ability against the pass. So, yeah, man, that's, uh, that's the edge rushers and the linebackers. Let me know if there's anybody on this list that kind of stands out to you guys. Um, Tyler's going to talk about. Uh, the linebackers on tomorrow's episode because I'm recording this on Saturday. So I'll let Tyler kind of clarify 
really the situation with Kaiser White because he's the one who uh, heard about it. So um, yeah, that's going to do it for me today. I, I hope you enjoy this video. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. We do really appreciate all of that feedback. It's, of course, how we continue to grow the channel. And that's going to do it for me. We'll see you guys later.